Hi, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about Creative Memories Hot Item, the Honeycomb Border Making Cartridge. So let me clear off the desk and I will show you how I got started. Okay. So we have the cartridge is inserted into the housing. Okay, so we just slide the paper in. We match it up according to the guide. Make sure it's flush in there in the corner. Push down the blue track, which is a magnet, and we'll hold the paper in place. And then we slide the guide back out of the way. This is just a reminder. We fit the housing unit into the track and we match up the little notches and we press down. Pull it out. Press down, pull it out, match up the guides, press down, and we keep going. You'll get six cuts. And then when you're done, you have this nice border that you can use to make a border or like we're gonna do today to make some fun embellishments. Okay, so let me show you now a process I did throughout making the borders and the embellishments that um, you'll need to know in order to create or recreate some of these ideas. Let me grab some more here. So basically what I wanted to do was to join the strips together. Once I joined the strips together, it gives me a much larger base area to work with. So I wanna adhere them, you know, line them up. When you line them up, you can either get those hexagons to match like that, or you can even overlap. Now, you can't really see the seam that well, even in person. I don't know about the video, maybe you can see it a little bit better, but in person you can't even see it. Once it's on the page and you have embellishments and photos, uh, no one's ever gonna see that seam. And I'll lay another one. So, so now it's gonna give me a bigger surface area to use to create the embellishments. So as I go through the video, I'll tell you uh, which process I use and how many strips I use or how many pieces. So to get those to stick together, I did use my repositional tape runner. You'll see I have a plastic mat here so I don't get it on my surface. And then you just run the tape runner down. Now this repositional will go through the holes there and that's why I have the plastic, but it's really good at getting the borders to stick together. And if I don't get it quite right, that's why, again, why I use the repositional so that I can lift it slightly and I have a little bit more time <laughs> to get them lined up. So there you go. Let's fix that part. Okay, let's do it again. Turn that around. and line it up. So here I'm overlapping a little bit. And now it's given me basically one big surface to um, use. Okay, so let me show you the first border that I made. And this was using four strips. You'll see down here that I have uh, four different strips of the honeycomb punch. So I made four gray strips and then I attached them like I was just showing you. So this makes a nice wide border. I adhered the four strips down onto this black piece of paper, which was about three and a half or three and three fourths inches wide. And then I just decorated it. So this was a perfect border to use up big titles that come in different packs. You don't know how to use them or big uh, words that you wanna just pop out. Um, very easy. I just picked that one and I did adhere it on some foam dots on the back and then placed it on top of. So you'll see this honeycomb pattern. What I really like about it is the amount of texture it adds to, um, to the border. I added some green leaf stickers. I believe this was an old creative memory sticker and then just some flowers that are, were already uh, dimensional and some chipboard hearts. Okay, very simple. Let me show you how that would look on a page. 
put this in here. Okay, I would do something like this where I would put the border off to the side and then I would add some photos. So we can do maybe two photos at the top. You could trim them down just a tad or scoot them over to overlap right there or scoot the, these are four by six mats. So you can see how you can still get three photos on this page, even with the big wide three and three fourths inch border off to the side there. Okay, that's our first idea. Now let me show you the next border that I made. So the next border I made is this one. And here I used just one strip of the honeycomb um, punched out. And then I weaved a thin border strip sticker through the center. This was, um, again, an older Creative Memory sticker. It's very thin, it's about an eighth of an inch. You can use thin washi, a thin piece of paper, and then you just weave it through. Okay, and then I just use some random pattern paper. This is a good way to use up some scrap paper, or if you wanted to coordinate a two-page spread, this is a great idea to use up the matching paper from one side to the other. I laid down that honeycomb strip, and then I simply embellished it with a couple other things. So I have the um, another hexagon, kind of to bring out that hexagon. I, I didn't really like that little star, so I'm probably gonna put a little flower sticker there and some word stickers, something like this. Get that under there. There we go. So I would layer it up kind of cute, something like that. Okay, but let me show you how versatile this is. If I just change from a pattern paper, if that's too um, too much for you, you you could also use it on some like tone on tone. This is just a piece of scrap paper, taking my same border and putting it over here, and you can see how it just changes the whole effect just by changing the paper out underneath. Okay, now that's the two border ideas. Let me now show you some of the embellishments that I made. So let's start with that one. Let's, bees and honey, honeycombs, they go together perfectly, right? So here you'll see um, I took three strips of the honeycomb after I cut it out from the border making system and then I adhere them with the repositional tape and cut it out. Let me just show you really quickly how I did something like that. So you'll see I used maybe a chunk that size, maybe a chunk that size, and then a little one like this. And then I adhere them all together. Let me get my little mat back out here. Okay. Let's see here. We want to do something like this. And you know, you'll have little pieces from the other borders you're making. Scoot that up a bit so you can see it. You know, so I just adhered the little pieces that I had here laying around. Adhered them in a pattern like that. So then I took the little piece of scrap yellow and put it on here. So what I would do first is maybe I wanna cut it into that shape. So I just went around and trimmed different pieces off, cleaned it up a little bit. Probably wouldn't want this piece here. So whatever design you're looking for, I would cut off these little stragglers. Oh, that's pretty nice what I have here. Get that out of the way. And then I took a piece of yellow scrap and then just adhered this to my yellow scrap. So let's do that. Kind of come down here to the bottom so it saves me from cutting. And then I just cut around 
the back. So kind of like using a cut file, right? I made my own cut file with my border making system. And I would really go in there with some maybe my fine tip scissors and cut around so that it would be nice and smooth like I did with that one. Okay, then I just embellished it with a B sticker. Again, I put that up on a foam dot and then some little word phrases. I attached like that. Okay, so that's the first one. Let me clean up and move on to number two. Number two is a journaling card. I know that seems like kind of um, easy, but for me, right now, I am focusing on adding journaling cards to my layouts. Um, I like to type up my journaling usually, but because I want to kind of speed up my process and I'm not afraid of using my handwriting, um, I thought I'm, I want to make journaling cards very easily and quickly, but I don't want to just add plain ones um, all the time. So sometimes I like to spruce them up a little. So I took some chart paper, I punched out across a little strip on some pattern paper, cut it to size, and then I just embellished it. I added a glittery heart, some leaves, and then a word sticker. So what I like most about this border making cartridge is the fact that it adds just the right amount of texture to your page. I could have just put down a journaling card and journaled away, but I wanted to tie it in to another page, or I just wanted to add some texture to my journaling card to give it some emphasis on the page. So that's number two. Number three is this little frame. I took the frame and I layered some of the honeycomb print in the back. You'll see this time I left even a little bit of the, the tag. Again, I'm just wanting to add some texture behind there. So I took the I took the frame and I cut out also a piece of scrap cardstock, attached the honeycombs, added a butterfly sticker, popped it up on some foam adhesive, and then some word stickers. Okay, that's number three. So let me demonstrate that because we can do that on any kind of shape. It doesn't have to be a frame. I'm gonna show you really quickly here how we can make it using our Creative Memories cutting system. Okay, so I'm gonna have the medium sized circle. I'm gonna use the blue and the red cutters. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the blue and cut out a circle. So this is kind of creating the same effect as the frame. I'm gonna make a circle frame. Oh, I moved it, I hope that's okay. Let's see, let's put that back. Yeah, you wanna make sure you hold it in place. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the red one. And this will give me a frame. Okay, it's a little off right there because you saw that I moved it, but you don't move yours <laughs> and you'll be fine. And this, this is still gonna work out. So that's gonna be my frame. And now I'm gonna have to make the back for the frame. So I'm just gonna give one more circle. You can do any size circle you want. You can cut your circles any way you want, but we, a lot of us already have this, so why not use it, right? Okay, so let me, let me put that aside. And so for this one, I'm gonna use some green honeycombs, okay? I don't need a full 12 inches, so I'm just gonna put in some scrap, grab my punch, and again, punch out a few. Okay, so I got about, oh, they all didn't come out, that's okay. Let's put that back there, pull this out. So I moved the punch, that's okay. I just cut it, get rid of our fallout here. So on this one, what I would do is, let me just trim this off. So you'll see it's still punched and because I'm using it not as a border, I didn't have to be as precise, but 
you can be. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, let's do it on this part, cover up the circle here. Okay, so I'm gonna use my repositional tape, add it to the circle, I'm gonna trim it, add some more repositional tape, You can stagger it any way that you would like. I'm just cutting off because it's above the circle and we're gonna cover all that up anyway. Okay, one more. Let's put it like that. And then I want to adhere my circle frame. So see, it's kind of giving us the same look. I'm not really happy with the way that's laying down, so that's why I used my repositional. Move it over just a tad. Okay, and then I'm going to bring back my mat here really quickly and I'm going to add some repositional around there. Layer that right on top. So see, I kind of made the same idea as our frame here and then I'm just going to trim off around the circle. I'm, I would lift it off probably and And trim around the circle. You could do it either way. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Okay, and now we we use that repositional, and there we go. I don't. I'm not really happy with how that's sitting. I maybe trying to go too fast here. I would line it up a little better than that. Let's take that off and move that. Okay, let me trim a little bit more too now. Okay. Okay, let's add a little more <laughs> adhesive because I was kind of playing with it a little bit. Okay. And whoops. There we go. This one I might use on like a C page. So I had pulled out this little octopus sticker that I would want to put on here, a fish, octopus, any of that would, would work. Let's peel this off. Woo, these, this is hard to get off of here. Okay, take that off. And then I would put that on there and then you can embellish, add words, add some little, other little things around here and there you go and that's how you can make a frame style embellishment and again so i just like the texture that it adds behind the stickers okay i'm just gonna move this little guy there's a spot over here that's just bugging me so i'm gonna move him over there and it kind of covers up some of those areas that i didn't like okay so that's the frame let's move out Move these aside, that's number three, using our custom cutting system. The next one is this banner. So again, I liked the texture that it added behind the banner. Okay, so I just used a strip of black, trimmed it off, added a banner, some twine, some flower chipboard, and some words. So let's make this one really, really quickly. I have everything ready to go here. Okay. So I'm going to, on this one, I actually used some foam. So let me get some foam out here. Okay. So I just popped up the banner with some foam squares. So I have my banner on foam. Then what I did was I wrapped the twine I did use some liquid adhesive for this. Okay, let's assemble. So I put a little bit of liquid adhesive or some glue here in the middle. Kind of press that down. Wasn't really sure where the glue was. Just gonna hold that for a couple.
couple seconds so it'll catch. And I want to slide on my tab because that's going to help me adjust the pieces while I still can. Okay, so I just kind of pull them a little bit. I kind of like how it's going off to the side over there. And then just trim. Trim off the, lay, the uh, little bottom part there. Okay, now this one, I wanted to add this little blue flower. Now I'm gonna pull these down a little bit. The glue's not quite dry yet under there, so I still have some time. This one, I was gonna add some leaves, I think, coming out. Let's see, do I like that? The, um, I haven't glued this piece down yet. Do I wanna do that? Yeah, I think I will. So I can, I'm gonna just pull this little piece off, put some of my adhesive back here. This one's really sticking in the back. I'm gonna pop those out. Trim off that bottom piece, I don't want that in there. Okay, now I can add my, my little chipboard piece. right there in the center. I'm going to find some words. Let's see. I have these word stickers and I like this one. It's just gonna bring in some more green. It says grateful, a grateful heart. So I'm gonna do something like that. Push that down. And then the last thing I would wanna do is add some gems. And you can embellish several different ways. Um, I can either put it here, which I kind of like, or over here. You see, I'm just trying to bring in some more blue. You can even put it on top of the little flower as well, but I think I'm gonna move it right over, scoot it up there a little bit. There we go. And there you go. You see how the honeycomb, just a little strip of it behind added just the right amount of texture to these embellishments. Okay, let's move those aside. Okay, and now the last one. Now I live in Southern California, so I don't get a lot of snow here. So I made some snowflakes using the honeycomb punch. Okay, so these are very easy. I'll show you really quickly how to, how to use those how to make those. What we basically need is three sections of honeycombs and we need three strips of them. One, two, three, cut. Now what I'm gonna do is cut it right down the middle. I don't like that one. <laughs> Get rid of that one because I have two more right here and I'm trying to go evenly down the middle. There we go. And then you're gonna see I just layered them like that. You can move them around. I am gonna use that repositional tape so that I could move them easily. And then I just added a pearl to the center. Easy. So there you go, easy, quick, little snowflake embellishment to add to your winter pages. Okay, so let me move this out of the way, slide back in all my embellishments here. That was our fifth one, there you go. Five embellishments and two borders. And one other thing before I, I sign off here is I wanted to, as I was creating all these different borders and embellishments, I thought of Wow, what, what else do I have in my stash? It kept reminding me of something else I had in my stash. And so I went and grabbed this Bow Bunny paper pad. Probably several of you have this in your stash as well. And this would be perfect for the honeycomb punch. Inside, the papers match just so beautifully. Let's just, oh, here we go, bees. <laughs> that floral paper, you can see how this honeycomb punch would just really bring 
this paper pad to life. Now I'm just randomly picking up sections. There's that blue one again, purple. Okay. So I hope that you um, enjoyed that and maybe picked up a few tips along the way of how you can use this honeycomb punch in unique, different ways. Um, of course, it is beautiful as a border, right? We looked at that. So it's super, let's put this one back. <laughs> that way I'm gonna use it on my page. It's super beautiful as a border, but also we can make other embellishments as well. Okay, um, I hope you liked that. If you did, please push the like button. Please subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to follow me on Facebook, I do have a Facebook channel. Um, it's Creative Memories Scrapbooking with Diane. I'd love for you to go join us over there. I do have do um, post their weekly different uh, scrapbooking tips. Okay, well, thank you. Enjoy your day and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.